the national title. Chris? Dan, thank you. The 220th victory in Tom Osborne's career should guarantee him a national championship, barring a surprise in the polls. Penn State, of course, playing Oregon in the Rose Bowl tomorrow, but Nebraska had a pretty comfortable lead over the Indian Lions coming into the bowls. Tommy Frazier, what a great personal story. Many thought his career was over. A potentially life-threatening blood clot in his leg. Comes back, has two different stints, two very different stints in this Orange Bowl game coming on in the second half and leading two touchdown drives. Yeah, you say two different stints, everybody's going to talk yeah. about that, but I don't think there was two different stints. I think Tom Osborne put him in the pickle by calling the pass early in the ball game when the interception occurred. Tommy Frazier should have kept running the ball then and Nebraska would have dominated throughout the ball game. He came back and what he did was give them the opportunity to run the option. He opened up that Miami defense that was tired because they'd been chasing around Lawrence Phillips that had run hard the entire game. His ability to come back in the fourth quarter, he did it last year against Florida State and Charlie Ward. He marched his team down the field. That experience is why I felt like all along he should have played the ball game. I don't think there's two cents at all. I think Tom Osborne put him in the bind. Well, after two ineffective series, Beringer came on and looked pretty good early. I don't think a lot of us expected to see Frazier back in the ball game. He was the MVP of the last Orange Bowl. We'll have to see how this vote turns out. You might want to give the entire offensive yeah. line of Nebraska the MVP lead. They really did what they thought they could do, didn't they? They wore down Warren Sapp and company. No question. I'd give them the most valuable player because they laid on them. They 300 pounds. They just kept banging them and banging them and banging them. And then important, they suckered that Warren Sapp across it. Boom! They stuck him in the ear hole and ran that fullback <laughs> trap. And that was the difference because that won the ball game for them. Nebraska's offensive line dominant Miami meanwhile not able to do anything negative yardage in the fourth quarter Craig we talked about it when they don't have an effective running game they don't win many of these big ball games no they, they do not do that you have 29 yards rushing by those guys and that really was something that hurt them and I think another thing that really hurt Miami was their inability to catch key passes that Frank Costa threw I thought Frank Costa threw the ball extremely well early in the game first half Costa to Marcus Wimberly third down and ten it would have converted he dropped it Again in the fourth quarter, Miami up eight, third down. He drops it. Chris T. Jones, usually dependable. That gave Nebraska the chance to get back into the game because they had the punt, turned the ball back over to them. Nebraska went in, tied the game up. You've got to catch the ball when they throw them like that. And those were all very catchable passes. I think the key part of the ball game was conditioning. In the fourth quarter, the Nebraska defense just wore out the Miami offensive line. They sacked four, they had minus yardage in the fourth quarter because the defensive line from Nebraska was in much better physical condition than those big fat offensive linemen from Miami. They just outwore them. Something them very tough for the Hurricanes to stomach. At the start of the fourth quarter, they always hold up four fingers. A lot of teams do that, but Miami really believes that no one can outplay them in the fourth quarter, particularly in their own house. And that was as emphatic a beating in the fourth quarter as we've ever seen in the Orange Bowl by an opponent of Miami. Well, you know, Miami talks about five minutes of hell against Washington. Well, they had 15 minutes of hell, of purgatory, and everything else. In the last 15 minutes, the best football team won Nebraska. They were out conditioned, and I tell you what, I think they wanted it more than Miami. They went and got it. You talk about out conditioning, Nebraska, and everybody knows in the country that they are notorious for having a great weight room program. They work extremely hard at being good in the weight room. Their conditioning with weights and with running paid off for them in the heat. Because we were down there this week, and it was humid, and in the fourth quarter, they dominated the ball game. The motto all year long has been unfinished business. They came two points shy last year in the Orange Bowl. The business just about finished. For highlights of the ball game, let's go back to Dan. Thank you, Chris. On Sunday night in Miami, the foe was familiar. So was the scenario. When Nebraska met Miami in the 1984 Orange Bowl, Tom Osborne was a win away from the national title. Eleven years later, Osborne was still a win away from his first national title, when the Huskers renewed old acquaintances with the Canes. To the Orange Bowl, we take you. And there is Coach Tom, one and seven in Orange Bowls. Osborne tabbing Tommy Frazier as his starting QB, but Nebraska went three and out. Frazier deep picked off by Carlos Jones in Nebraska's second possession. Osborne quickly goes to Brooke Berenger, and Berenger seemed ready. First quarter, the other QB, Frank Costa going to work. Looking for A.C. Tellison. Trent Jones going 35 yards for the score. Miami led it 10 to nothing. Home field advantage, 10 point lead. They look like they had the momentum. Nebraska goes to Miami's 19 yard line and they try to capitalize. Beringer, Mark Gilman, 10 7 Miami. Some of that cockiness deflating perhaps. Miami still led 10 7 at the break. Second half, Miami's first break. 
Costa goes to Jonathan Harris, 17-7. 44 yards on the score. And once again, Miami looked like they would put it out of reach. Still in the third, Nebraska's defense. Miami at their own three, Costa. Say hello to Dwayne Harris, 17-9 Miami. Nebraska on Miami's 32. And Barringer. Muffs the handoff to Lawrence Phillips, who fumbles. It's recovered by James Burgess. So Miami leading 17-9. They've got the ball. Time winding down in the third. Well, Berenger on the side. Frazier comes in. It's still 17-9. And Corey Schlesinger, 17-15 Miami. Nebraska goes for a two-point conversion. Tom, of course, remembers the 1984 Orange Bowl when he went for two and didn't get it. 17-17. Frazier to Eric Alford. Frazier again. Frazier feeling the confidence. Scrambles for 25 yards on a third and four from his own 48. He's pumped. So is his team. Miami looks extremely tired. Schlesinger again busting up the gut. 24-17 Nebraska. Nebraska and Tom Osborne finally win the Orange. More importantly, for Tom Osborne, he finally wins a national title. Congratulations to one of the class acts in all of college football. Some questionable calls, I'm sure, for Coach Osborne, including the uh, first and goal from the three when he had the pass picked off. Brooke Berenger uh, intercepted there. Ten and two is how Miami ends. Warren Sapp dominating in this game for three quarters, running out of gas. Following the game, though, Mike Tirico spoke with Tommy Frazier. Tommy, how sweet is this? Oh, so sweet. I thought, I believe that's what was going to happen, and it did. Were you down after you came out and Brooke came in? No, I wasn't down. The coach said that we were going to go in sometime late first, second, early second quarter. And what? He was doing good, so stay in. So I just had a bitch to wait patiently. What you guys do in the second half differently? Nothing. We just got ready to offense. We knew that we were getting, we just ran to offense. Do you believe that you beat them here? Yes, I believe them. I said I long thought that we could beat them here. That's not unbeatable here. We beat them, yeah. If you want to find the national title, just follow Nebraska. Every year since the bowl structure began, when Nebraska has finished the regular season undefeated, either the Huskers or their bowl opponent has gone on to earn the national championship. We will get back to the Orange Bowl for more a little later, but first, the Sunday conversation. George Foreman. In his world, it's good to be king. Everything in George's world is... The only team that lost to, uh, the only team I should say that uh, beat Colorado this year was Nebraska. The Buffaloes in the field. Oh, Oh, yeah, baby! Woo! Nebraska offensive lineman Joel Wilkes. So the celebration that started just after midnight Eastern time and continued long into the South Florida morning as Nebraska looks like we'll finally win a national championship. We'll talk to Coach Tom Osborne in a couple of minutes. First, let's take a look back at another facet of last night's game. Of the 67 offensive snaps, Burke Berenger took 40. Tommy Frazier took 27 the decisive 27 as it ended up. And when you take a look, this was really a microcosm of his entire season. A long, agonizing wait for Tommy Frazier, who finally got a chance to play out the scenario that he thought would happen in the national title game. That's what he said on television. He said he's gonna come out there and lead our team to the national championship, and he did that. There was a, a set plan at the beginning to, to go with Tommy through most of the first quarter. Uh, bring Brooke, Brooke in uh, late in the first quarter or at the beginning of the second, and that's basically what happened. Tommy Frazier had waited three months for his chance to return to the field. And after 13 first quarter snaps this Orange Bowl night, Frazier had three yards rush, one interception, and one seat back on the bench. I was very confused, you know, because I was wondering, hey, I went out there, I wasn't doing bad, and here I'm not too serious, I'm on the sideline. But, you know, Coach Gear came up to me and told me that just stay focused, that and he's out there moving the team well, that I might, if I get the opportunity to come, they're going to give me the call and go back out there and do what I can do best. He wasn't down, I guess he was more like frustrated, and he just needed a boost, and when Brooke went in and was doing great, I mean, I'm pretty sure that picked him up to play a better game. The middle of the game, just like the middle of Nebraska's season, found Brooke Berenger at quarterback. The junior moved the team on a couple of drives, but his key mistake left Tom Osborne with a decision. Fourth quarter, trailing by eight. Title hopes again faded. The coach went back to his starter for just his third series in three months. This is kind of an instinctive move. It wasn't any plan. And Turner and I talked about it on the sideline, Turner Gill, and we thought it was time to put Tommy in, and Tommy responded very well. Despite a nagging cold, Frazier's fresh legs, his late game quickness, and option ability opened up creases for Corey Schlesinger's game tying and winning touchdowns. 
Tommy Frazier's running the option. Who will you if you're a linebacker? Who are you going to focus on? You know, you're going to say, well, I got to stop Tommy Frazier, and then you know, Tommy starts giving the ball inside. They're overrunning the fullback, and it showed. And Corey ran wild on him. It's a pretty long year for you. Yeah, it's been a long year, and that's the way it is. And joining us now, Nebraska coach Tom Osborne. Uh, a thought on Tommy Frazier? Not his in-game performance, but the way he personally handled a very difficult season for a young man. I thought Tommy showed a lot of maturity. Uh, you know, at, at one point there was some question, uh, uh, worst case scenario, where whether he'd ever play again or not. Uh, those blood clots, and uh, he uh, never seemed to waver, uh, never uh, powdered around, or felt sorry for himself. Uh, went through a fairly difficult regimen of uh, shots for Coumadin and uh, you know various blood thinners. And, I guess, according to what the medical people say, he was a great patient, and uh, he really prepared himself well for this game. A couple of quick thoughts from you, personally. Was there a moment, you're the ultimate team man, was there a moment last night when you got by yourself, you and your wife, and just realized that finally you accomplished something that has been so long sought after? Well, uh, yeah, we obviously thought about it. I, I guess the boat isn't in yet, so I don't, <laughs> you never say, uh, you never say never, or whatever, but Certainly it was gratifying to see our team play the way they did and uh, to come from behind and beat Miami in Miami. It's a, that's a challenge, you know. So we were, we were really pleased with the whole season and particularly the way they, they responded last night. Quite a bit of adversity. Two quick ones. The polls, you promised Joe Paterno you wouldn't politic, and you guys have done that all the way through. Do you feel that there's uh, any way that Nebraska won't be national champion? Well, yeah. I, you know, Joe and his team, they're going to play great today, I'm sure. And so uh, who knows what will happen. Uh, people are going to have to, to vote. Joe's got a great football team. I, I wish we could have played. I, I wish some way we could get that done, you know. For you, back on the recruiting trail, will you continue to coach? Is this a point where you'd stop and say, let me look back and wonder if I want to keep doing this? I'll look back for a couple hours. I'll be out on the road tomorrow. And <laughs> so uh, I enjoy, co enjoy coaching. Nothing else I'd rather do. Tom Osborne, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Let's go back to Chris Fowler. Chris? Mike, thank you. Osborne silencing those whispers that have been heard in the state of Nebraska for the past couple of months that he might retire if his team won the title. By the way, last night in Lincoln, fans stormed Memorial Stadium, wanted to rip down the goalposts. They were too late. They'd already been taken down for the winner. Osborne, a cautious man, but here's why we think it's a foregone conclusion that Nebraska will win the national championship when the polls come out tomorrow. The margin over Penn State was pretty convincing. They had uh, 26 more first-place votes. In the uh, coaches poll, the Associated Press poll was a little bit closer, but uh, most of the national media that have votes were watching the Orange Bowl last night and had to be impressed. Is that the way it should work out? Is that the way it will work out, in your opinion? Well, let's take a look at how we got here in this situation. Last October, there was a split poll. Penn State and Nebraska both had one of the polls. Then Nebraska beat Kansas. Penn State beat Indiana. But it, the perception was it was a very close game, where it actually wasn't. Actually, Penn State lost the chance at the national title with a Hail Mary pass, or else they'd have got there number one. Unfortunately, and that's yeah. the way voters look at it. They see the box scores, they don't look into the game, know what happened there. And I agree with Tom Osborne. Unfortunately for him, it's not going to happen. He will not play against the Penn State team. And that's the same statement that Joe Paterno will make after this ball game today. He'll beat Oregon, and he's going to say, boy, I wish we could play a great Nebraska team. It'd be a dynamite shootout. All year long, the pollsters have been impressed more by defense than by big scores. Nebraska's defense is great again last night. But Patrick, a field goal that hooked just to the left and maybe some officiating calls. They lost to Florida State by two points. All year long, the motto was unfinished business. Consider the business finished after last night's game against the Hurricanes in their own half. Osborne starting Tommy Frazier. The decision didn't look good early. Frazier throws deep on first down after the Huskers had driven well on the ground. It is picked off. Barringer warms up, replaces Frazier after two series. Meanwhile, the Hurricanes offense is humming. Frank Costa flips it out to Trent Jones, who gets in the end zone. 10-0 after one quarter. Then it was 10-7. Then 17-9 after a safety. Barringer following a messed up punt by Miami. The first play following that throws the interception. Barringer out, Frazier back in. The second play of the first drive when Frazier came back to the ball game, Schlesinger gets in the end zone. Nebraska back within two. Oh, to have a two-point conversion 11 years ago. Instead, he gets one right here to tie the game at 17. Nebraska gets the ball back. Frazier on the action again. Keeps it. 25 yards. Miami's defensive line just getting worn down. Warren Sapp played well, but the Husker O-line too much. They trapped 
Miami's defensive line, Schlesinger gets in the end zone. That's the winning touchdown. Tom Osborne, a cautious man. He's not counting the national championship just yet. When the hosts come in tomorrow, Nebraska's lead, if anything, should grow in the fold. Afterwards, we asked Tommy Frazier about how he felt. Huskers dominating in the fourth quarter. Offensively, the defense doing a great job. Miami not converting a third down. And Frazier talked about coming back in the ballgame after being removed in the end of one quarter. I was very confused, you know, because I was wondering, hey, I went out there, I wasn't doing bad, and now here I'm not too serious, I'm on the sideline. But, you know, Coach Gear came up to me and told me that just stay focused, that, hey, he's out there moving the team well, that I might, mean, if I get my opportunity to come, they're going to give me the call and go back out there and do what I can do best. We just felt like uh, maybe Tommy, uh, his quickness, maybe an option or two uh, in that fourth quarter would help us, and so... Uh, just kind of an instinctive move. It wasn't any plan, and Turner and I talked about it on the sideline, Turner Gill, and we thought it was time to put Tommy in, and Tommy responded very well. Were you doing some different things when Tommy came back in that, that helped open the fullback eventually yeah. in those two touchdowns? A little more options. I think the, the thing we had done is we had about 23, 24 practices, and really had conditioned hard. And we felt, uh, Mike, that if we were close going in the fourth quarter, we'd have a great chance in this ball game because we're a pretty strong physical team, and Sometimes we uh, we just wear people down a little bit with their running game, and so uh, I think some of that happened. And I'm not in any way uh, knocking Miami; they've got a tremendous defense. But uh, we sometimes the two-yard gains in the first quarter become five and six uh, in the fourth quarter, and that's what happened. In the fourth quarter, I was just physically exhausted and didn't you know have much energy left to even get the ball downfield, and my arm was very tired. And, you know, I, was, I guess I just kept getting up out of habit. Two consecutive drives, they won the score, they won the ball game. That's what they had to do and that's what they did. Yeah, I think America wants to see Nebraska play against Penn State. That's not going to happen. Craig, we talked about Nebraska's dominant offensive line wearing down the Canes, but they've had a lot of teams over the years with great offensive lines. Why was this Nebraska team able to get the job done? I think just, just the conditioning level in their defense. I think the defense was underrated going into this ball game, and Miami's inability to run the football really hurt them. You saw where Frank Costa was sacked five times. That really doesn't tell the story. This guy was hit throughout the ball game. And in terms of Miami and that running game, or lack of, I thought in the fourth quarter when they couldn't get off the goal line, when they couldn't establish any momentum, that killed the Miami Hurricanes, and they had to resort to the pass on third and long. There's no way you can do against that against a team like Nebraska secondary. Well, Craig, Nebraska's Hall of Fame coach Bob Devaney told me in, our, in Colorado on October the 29th, this was the finest oh, a Nebraska team he had ever seen in Nebraska. He's been there for 45 years. That said it all. Interesting point here. Bobby Bowden wins his first national championship at the expense of Tom Osborne last year. Ha! Tom Osborne gets his in Miami this time. Poetic justice. Tom Osborne, a very cautious man, though. You know, he got it. All precincts have not reported, but I think Nebraska had a pretty significant lead in both polls. So we get into this ball game, and if you beat Miami that impressively in their house in the fourth quarter, it's hard to imagine the pollsters flip-flopping, but then again, anything can happen in the poll system. Coming back, we'll talk about the Rose Bowl. As Penn State watched last night in frustration, they prepared for the Oregon Ducks. We'll check in and pass it in with the latest from there. We continue at halftime for the courthouse here's in the coaches' poll, an emphatic margin and a huge sentiment for Tom Osborne among the coaches. The AP poll is a little bit closer. The margin is 15 points. Huskers had 14 more first place votes, but many of the media who vote in the AP poll were covering the Orange Bowl game, so that's obviously a key factor there. We'll have to wait and see when the poll is right. Kajana and the Nittany Lions make it a pretty good spot to be in on Monday, following the Cornhuskers' victory over Miami at the Orange Bowl in the Orange Bowl. Back in Lincoln, Nebraska Governor Ben Nelson called the game's final 15 minutes the greatest fourth quarter in Nebraska football history, and with it, according to the coaches' poll, a national championship. And you wouldn't get an argument here. 15,000 just packed their sports center. Tommy Frazier, Brooke Berenger went home for some quality family time. Tom Osborne, the man so many were so happy for, showed up the way he'd wanted to for 22 years as a national champ. I wasn't one of those people who was pulling against Penn State. I imagine there are some Nebraskans who were hoping that Penn State would lose. And, but um, I didn't feel that way at all. Probably celebrate by going somewhere and trying to catch a bonefish or something like that. Really wild. Really a crazy uh, uh, explosion emotionally, I guess. Those comments actually before the official coaches poll came out. Nebraska 
they picked up, they go from 44 first place votes in the last poll to 54. Where did they get those extra 10? Well, they got them from Penn State, who dropped 10. Colorado, 3. So Bill McCartney, in his last season at the school, gets them a number 3 ranking. Alabama, 4. Florida State at number 5. Still the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, Penn State and Oregon. Would Nebraska's win have any effect on the Nittany Lions mentally? Joe Paterno looking for a 16th bowl win, or Rich Brooks was just looking for number 1. The nation's number 1 offense explodes. First play from scrimmage, Kajana Carter right at you, 83 yards, into your living room for a touchdown, put the Lions up 7 to nothing. Would Oregon's Danny O'Neill duck his head and hide? I don't think so. O'Neill, with a big passing day, hits Josh Wilcox, 33 yards, down to the Penn State 1. O'Neill, play action, might as well give it to the guy who got you there. Wilcox, the one-yard score, the game tied at 7. Joe Pa knew he was in a football game. Third quarter, Penn State up seven. Kerry Collins under a heavy rush. He's picked off by Reggie Jordan. Jordan rumbles down to the Lions' 17-yard line. That set up O'Neill. Watch the beauty lob to Kristen McLemore, who skies for the 17-yard touchdown tied at 14. With the momentum shifts on the ensuing kickoff. Ambrose Fletcher follows the wedge, breaks the kicker, Matt Belden's tackle, and races 72 yards before Isaac Walker able to tackle him down from behind at the 21. That set up Kajana Carter, the scamper. 17 yards untouched for the Penn State touchdown. 21-14, Penn State. At that point, Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions go on to win by a score of 38-20. to Penn State, the first undefeated, untied team to win a Rose Bowl since Ohio State did it in 1968. The Buckeyes, well, they were number one that year. This was Joe Paterno's fifth undefeated season in 29 years in Happy Valley. But only one of the five have brought him a national championship. And I'm not telling you I'm as tough for a week or anybody tonight, but I don't think we should get a rap that we have not played a tough schedule, nor would I want to put that rap on Nebraska. I think both teams are very, very fine football teams, and it's a shame either both of them can't be national champs, so we can't have a playoff. We did all we had to do. We went 11 0. The October schedule in Nebraska did uh, in the regular season. We won the Rose Bowl by 18 points. I mean, what, what more can we do to get a national championship? It's a shame we're not going to get it. I've been an inspiration to myself, the rest of the team, and national championship coach this year. The Penn State is good and all, but we gave them all their points. The defense, I think they only had one drive. We did not come here to, to give them a good fight and go home with a smile on our face. We came here to win and win only, and uh, second place is not good enough for us. We're disappointed. More on Danny O'Neill, who shared MVP honors with Kajana Carter. O'Neill, 41 of 61, 456 yards to set the passing yardage record in the Pasadena Bowl game. Ironically, the four names and numbers you see before you, all that yardage, all four of those quarterbacks lost their respective games. Two INTs really hurt O'Neill. Correct sure that both polls came out the way they were supposed to with Nebraska number one. Apparently that's where Tom Osborne and I differ. I was asleep and uh, somebody called three in the morning or something like that, I think from the coaches poll and notified us that we had uh, been named champions, but I I really uh, didn't worry about it. Uh, you know, I, I guess I was like Thomas Dewey. I just uh, figured the votes would come out and I went to bed. Congratulations, Tom. I think you did a super job and you know how I feel about you and about your team. I think you've got a great football team and if we can arrange it, let's play in about 10 days. All right, Tom?